everyone, welcome or welcome back to Hook Around and Find Out, the sort of mini series I do where we have a little bit of a chat while we crochet. Although today there won't be much crochet on my end because it is a rest day currently, so I am giving my shoulder a break. So over the past several weeks, I've gotten a few comments that have really got me thinking about the way projects are presented on YouTube in my case, crochet projects in particular, versus the reality of actually creating those projects. And that's sort of what I want to talk about today. But that will have to wait a moment because a car has just pulled up in my driveway. So I'm going to go deal with that and then we're going to discuss today's topic. All good. It was no one important, just my sister. Honestly, I think she's here more than I am and I live here. So back on topic. These comments that I mentioned were, were all some variation of I wish I could crochet quicker so I could make X a lot faster or I wish I could crochet Y project in one week. You know, just sort of things, things of that nature. And I mean, that's a valid goal to have if you would like to crochet faster and more efficiently. I mean, go for it. There are ways you can learn to do that. But I want to be transparent. You know, I like to be honest in my videos. And I want to put it out there that generally speaking, what you see in a YouTube video does not at all reflect the, the time, the effort, the sweat and tears it takes to actually make a YouTube video. And that's just what I want to talk about today. And I thought in addition to that, what I may do is towards the end of this video is share how I sort of plan and schedule my crochet projects so I'm able to release fairly consistently more crochet heavy videos and not get overwhelmed or stressed out. And just a couple of quick disclaimers before we get into the meat of the, the topic here. Uh, number one, the these comments, they were positive comments. So my, my point here is not to say oh, these commenters are silly or they actually think, you know, it takes three days to make a huge crochet project. That's not my point at all. It's just that these particular comments got me thinking about this topic initially. So that is that is why I mentioned them. And secondly, I am speaking from my own experience here and what it takes for me to sort of create a YouTube video, what goes on in the background. Uh, my point here is not to like throw other creators under the bars. I'm not trying to make out there like nefarious little yarn goblins that are trying to deceive you. No, that's not what I'm trying to do. I'm just trying to highlight sort of the differences between what you see publicly and what actually goes on in the background. I mean, I guess the first thing that we can talk about, which kind of leads into the, the second topic, is crochet speed. I've seen a lot of comments about, I would like to crochet faster. And yes, I fall into that category too. I've joked about that a lot, but sometimes I do mean that seriously. I would, or I wish that I could crochet faster sometimes. In my specific case, I am limited by my health issues, but there are a number of reasons why someone may not be able to crochet, you know, super, super quickly. And honestly, I don't think, I don't think crochet speed should matter all that much. I think the correct crochet speed for you is the one you're crocheting at. And that can fluctuate. It can fluctuate day to day. It can fluctuate during the day. It is unfortunately really easy to look at other crocheters and crafters, compare yourself to them and to find yourself wanting, whether that is in crochet speed or something else entirely. And the only advice I can offer, unhelpful though it might be sometimes, is try not to do that. The correct speed for you is the one that you're currently crocheting that. Like I mentioned earlier, there are ways you can improve your speed if that is something you would like to do. There are tutorials available on YouTube, but generally speaking, just go at your own pace. Personally, I think my crochet is a lot less fun when I focus on those more, let's call them irrelevant factors such as crocheting speed or how many skeins of yarn I can use or how many projects I can make within a certain time frame. I prefer a more relaxed approach. Crochet is my de-stressor. 
So why would I want to add stress to a situation that is supposed to have the complete opposite effect? I knew I should have written notes for this video. I feel like I'm rambling quite a bit, but these are just my thoughts off the off the top of my head. So if they don't make 100% coherent sense, I apologize, but that's what we're going to go with today. As I said, it's my rest day and apparently rest day means I don't write notes either. So yes, the entire point of that, I think rather rambling section was even though there are going to be exceptions, for example, you may be running a business where you have to make a certain amount of product or you know something something in that vein but for the most part the correct crochet speed for you is the one you're currently crocheting that don't stress yourself out when you don't need to and i think that should apply to people who make youtube videos as well i'm not always great at following my own advice when it comes to that but for the most part i try and keep things keep things laid back crochet speed is really only one piece of a larger puzzle when it comes to making crochet or craft videos for YouTube. If you scroll through my channel, you'll see that my videos, they range in length from somewhere between like 15 or so minutes to about half an hour for the more entertainment crochet challenge focused ones. Patterns and tutorials can run a bit longer than that, but that's just sort of their nature. And the reality is that is only a tiny, tiny fraction of the amount of time it takes to create an entire video. There are things you need to take into account even before you get to the filming stage. There is planning and preparation. You need to have your idea, you need to plan out your idea. If you're someone who writes scripts, you will need to do that beforehand as well. If you're a designer who wants to share a pattern and tutorial, that means you have to actually create your pattern before you can film a video. And anyone who does that will know that can take quite a while and you might have to do three, four or more trial runs until you get the pattern correct. Then once all of that is done, you have to set up for filming. Then you have to do your last minute checks before filming. Then there is the actual filming. And a lot of the time that's not as simple as you sitting down, turning on the camera and recording yourself crocheting. A lot of the times you will need to continually adjust the camera you may need to move location. You may have to adjust the lighting constantly. I know for me, that is an issue because this room that I'm in here, it gets it gets some natural light, but it's really terrible natural light. So if it's like an overcast day and it alternates between sunny and cloudy, I am constantly you know, adjusting the brightness of my lights. It's honestly a pain in the ass, but it's something that you have to take into account. And once that's done, and take in mind, this is not necessarily a one day and you're done kind of thing. You may have to film over days, weeks. In my case, a couple of videos that I've made so far have been filmed over the course of a couple of months. And then after all of that comes editing. And even the editing itself is not a simple task. You've got to first transfer your footage from all of your devices if you're using more than one onto your PC or laptop, whatever device it is you're using for editing. Then you need to sort that footage. You need to make sure you have all your footage because like I know from experience, sometimes footage gets corrupted. Sometimes you just forget to film something or sometimes you thought you filmed something, but it turns out you didn't press record properly. Sometimes your audio is buggered up. That that in particular has been a thorn in my side for months. I've had so many audio issues, but there is a number of things you need to do with or for your footage before you get to the editing stage. Then you've got to import it into your video editor. Then you need to actually edit it. And this process, depending on how much you edit and if you're adding you know, graphics, green screen effects, so on and so forth, this process itself can take many, many hours. I know for a lot of my more graphics heavy videos, they can take anywhere from a few days to a couple of weeks to edit. Once you've done all that, you will need to render and export. And depending on the specs of your PC or laptop, this is again a process that can take a while. When that's done, you then need to upload to YouTube and take care of all the, the back end stuff in the YouTube studio, which compared to the other things we've done, isn't all that time consuming, but it does take, 
does take a decent amount of time if you want to do it properly. And then when that's taken care of, you're not even finished yet because you need to create your thumbnail. Again, another process that can be done relatively quickly or it can take a couple of hours if you want to put a lot of effort into your thumbnail. And then you can do your last minute checks and if everything's all good, you can release your video. But even then, it's not necessarily over because if you're someone who uses social media, you might want to promote your video on there. So you're going to have to make a vertical video for a TikTok or a Reel or a YouTube short. You might want to take pictures for your Insta, stuff like that. I don't do that so much anymore. I am really terrible with social media. I feel like I should be on it more, but I just, I've never been a big user of it. And I've tried like really hard to, to get into the habit, but it's just not one that's stuck for me. So to anyone who's ever reached out to me on Instagram, I apologize that it takes me a while to get back to you. I just, I just don't use Instagram all that often. Honestly, if you want to get in touch, do it via Discord. That, there's a link down in the description. You can just hop into the Discord and DM me. Much, much easier. And I will, I will actually see that. So that is what it takes, at least in my experience, what it takes to actually make a YouTube video. Think about how many hours of work that is. And then what everyone gets to see publicly is a, a polished, well, mostly polished, 20 minute or so video. And my point in bringing all of this up is to say that if you ever find yourself thinking, I wish I could crochet X as quickly as this creator does, or I wish I could crochet these or a big project every week like this specific creator does, that's that's probably wishful thinking. And I don't mean that in a negative or nasty way. I mean it in that those creators may not have done that either. I know in my case, I certainly don't do one big project a week. It's just that what you see in that finished, final, polished version of the video doesn't always represent what actually happens during the course of filming or creating a project. I know I like to include when I bugger up or if I have to frog a piece or if I have to restart from scratch sometimes, I like to include those mistakes as much as I can just because I think it makes for a more honest and sort of upfront kind of video. But in reality, you just can't include all of that if only for, you know, time reasons. You just can't include every time, you know, you got frustrated or every time you threw a temper tantrum or every time you just had to put it down and walk away. Just walk away for a good hour or so. Keeping all of that in a video would just slow it right down and I think make it significantly less fun. A bit is okay in my opinion. You want to show what really happened, you know, you want to be transparent, but on the other hand, too much of it, not a good thing. A good example would be my fairy wings that I crocheted a few weeks ago. Uh, if you're interested in seeing that video, I'll pop a link down in the description. But that project, I spread that out over a couple of months. That's how long it took me to just crochet and create those. And I cut out of the footage. I actually mentioned this in a previous hook around and find out video, but I cut out hours of footage that was just me being frustrated about trying to get the wire, the wire border crocheted into the wings. That was a nightmare to do all my own fault because I used the wrong kind of wire and I didn't really have pliers to help me bend the wire into the correct shape. So I definitely brought that on myself, but if I had included all of that in the video, it would have been just eight hours of footage of me swearing. I mean, that's legitimately what it would have been. So that was the reality of the situation, but all you guys got to see in that video was I think about 30 or so seconds of sped up footage of me crocheting the wire to the wings. Yes, you guys got to see those few rare moments where my ears weren't steaming and I wasn't swearing like a sailor. And to be honest, uh, this whole process is not just applicable to large projects. It's also, for me, applicable to smaller ones as well. Take the most recent Friday video I did, for example. If if I've timed this correctly, it will be my most recent Friday video. I made this little guy, this little 2D pug. This is, I mean, it's a kind of small crochet project. But even that, I filmed the crocheting and creation of that over the course of three days. And that 
is just the filming alone. That doesn't take into account the time it took to edit, all the other stuff that we have to do that I mentioned earlier. I'm not going to reiterate all that again. But even the smaller scope projects can take a while to create as well. And, and as I'm saying all this, it occurs to me that it might sound discouraging to anyone who's looking to, to start their own YouTube journey. And I promise that's not what I'm trying to do. As difficult as it can be sometimes, I think it's worth it. I enjoy creating content for YouTube. I like getting to be creative and coming up with ideas for weird and wonderful crochet challenges. I like being able to share my patterns and tutorials with people. And honestly, I really like editing. Before I started YouTube, I never, well, that's that's a bit of a lie. I used, I think, Windows Movie Maker once in high school to edit a an assignment. I don't remember any other details, but I know I used it to make an assignment, but that was the only editing experience I have. And then I started doing, you know, stuff on YouTube and I learned that I thoroughly enjoy editing. So that was a nice surprise. But yeah, my point here is not at all to discourage anyone. It's not to be negative. It's just to say that if this is something that you would like to do and anyone can do it, you need to be prepared for the realities of it. There is a lot of work that goes into creating a video. It's not just as simple as record, edit, upload, and you're good to go. There's obviously a lot of variation there, depending on what kind of video you do, it's going to take more or less time. Take the video I'm making right now, for example, this sort of sit down and chat style video. It requires a lot less planning and preparation. It requires a lot less time to film. It requires a lot less time to edit. Contrast that with, uh, let's say, one of the collabs I did with Complicated Knots. We did that over 100 days. So there's going to be a, a spectrum and depending on what kind of content you want to make is going to like determine where on that spectrum you fall and therefore how long your videos are going to take to create. So that's going to segue us nicely into the, like, the third and final section of this video. And that is how I schedule my videos. So it kind of looks like I have a crochet video released every week or at a stretch every second week when in reality I'm not creating them week by week, if that makes sense. For this, it may help if I have a bit of a, a visual representation to go along with my explanation. We'll use the we use the graphic design software of Champions for this. So what I will do is I will have between about four and six projects going at the same time. That might sound like a lot, but I structure them in this way, which I'm going to show you in a moment, to make it more manageable. So my first project, I'm going to call this Project A. You know what? I'm going to put... The timeline down here so this is going to be let's say these these are weeks okay this is not going to be incredibly accurate but hopefully you guys we are to see what i'm talking about all right so 16 weeks so we'll roughly say this is about four months all right so let's call this first one project a project a i will start but I estimate this project to last between, you know what, we'll, we'll just use our timeline. I estimate this project to last between three to four months. So this project will be created over this period of time. Okay. Then at the same time, I'll be working on, we'll call it project B. Project B, I estimate to take about half that time. So let's say about two months. So two months. We'll pop that there. Project C. We'll do green for Project C. And I estimate that to take roughly one month. So that will be one, two, three, and four-ish like that. That's Project C. And then at the same time I have going projects D, E, F, and G. And I estimate those ones to all take about two weeks. They're projects that are a lot smaller. So we'll go two and then I'm going to put another two, another two and another two. So my structure is not quite as 
linear as this, but at least you can get the general idea of what I mean. So when I start working on these projects, I'd say 70% of, of the time, I'm going to be working on project D up here. So I'll be working on this one. So 70% of my energy will go into that. And then I might put like 10% into here, 10% into here, and 10% into here. So I work on those, I work on those, I work on those. And then because I'm putting a lot more effort into project D, I'm going to finish this video and that will be released at that date. When I finish this bit, like, why am I pointing to the screen? You guys can't see this. You can see the screen. Now that I finished that first project, I will then switch most of my focus to work on project C. Bearing in mind, I have kept working on it a little bit as I was working on project D. So I might be up to like here at the moment. So my focus will switch to finishing off project C. That was C, wasn't it? Yeah, project C. And as I'm working to finish project C, I'm also still putting effort into projects B down here. So I'm working on that, I'm working on that, I'm working on that. And also project A. So I'm working on that, working on that, working on that. When project C is finished, so that is finished, I release that video like here. I will then switch focus again. So my main focus at this point becomes project B. Purple squiggle down here. I'm going to put a lot of my focus into that. I'm going to continue working on project A though, but now I'm going to start putting energy into project, what was this one? E, project E. Now I can remember that. So project E, so some of my focus is going on here. At the same time, I might start a, another project. Let's get green again. That is similar to project C in terms of estimated length or the time it'll take to complete. So I might start that here and I'll continue working on that for a few weeks like that. So some of my focus now will be turned to this new project. All right, as I continue, I'm also working on project A and putting energy into project E and I'm also focusing a bit on my new project C, which is the new green line here. So I want to finish off project B do, 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 do. still working on this still working on this still working on this then project b is finished i release that still working on project a at this point i'm pretty much finished project e so you're done and i release that but that's going to be released down here uh, still working on project a still working on project c i'm starting to work on new project f and i will continue doing this now that project b is finished i might start off a Another large project B. When project C is finished, and I finish this one here, so I finish you. I'll start a new project C, and that will go off there. And then all the while, I'm continuing to work on my really large project, which is project A. Put energy into this other smaller project. I'll start work on this one and this one. And then finally, I'll finish my really large project after a couple of months. So that's finished, that'll get released. But at the same time, I'm still working on these two, still working on these two, still working on these. And eventually I will finish and release those as well. That was kind of chaotic, wasn't it? That was a little bit of a disaster, but I hope you can understand what I mean. I have several projects going at once, but they're all estimated to take different lengths of time to complete. And I put the majority of my focus into one at a time and work on the, the longer format videos in, in increments until I get to, I'd say, the last 20-30% of those projects. Then I switch my focus over to there until they're finished. And at the same time, I'm still working on those, those shorter form projects. There's nothing really I need to add to that. I just wanted to, you know, put out there very very original thought that youtube is not reality and sort of just discuss what that means sort of in relation to to me and the crochet videos that i make i hope my rambling entertained you at the very least so thank you all for watching consider subscribing if you haven't already like the video if you enjoyed it share it if you think it's worth sharing and i will see you in the next one